I'm Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. <laughs> hey y'all, we are in unit two, our dynamics unit. We're doing force problem with friction. There's my little vector sign with friction today. So we're just gonna get started. I have a 10 kilogram turkey. Um, you know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up soon. A 10 kilogram turkey is pulled from rust with a 50 newton force on a rough surface so your table is a rough surface the turkey moves a distance of two meters in 1.50 seconds what is acceleration friction force and coefficient of friction for you vegetarians out there i apologize for the problem ahead of time let's just try to go with the season anyway so the very first thing we do on a force problem is we do a free body diagram so here we go, we have free body diagram. Now here are the things. First of all, it's on a surface. So you know you have normal. If you have a surface, you have normal. Normal is always perpendicular uh, to the surface and is pushing. So if this is my little table surface here, perpendicular, straight up, and we have our normal force. All right, then I'm gonna take this one out now just so you can see that that was perpendicular. We also have mass. If you have mass, you know you have force due to gravity. I'm gonna draw that down, force due to gravity. Now I drew, I drew those or tried to draw those as equal and balanced forces because the turkey is not flying off the table. So I have a rabbit here. If the rabbit's being pulled across the table, it's being pulled horizontally. It's not coming off the table vertically at all. All right, now we also have, we know it's a rough surface, that's our clue, that the mass was the clue that we had force due to gravity, uh, the surface was a clue that we had a normal force, the rough surface is our clue that we have friction. I'm going to assume that we're moving and accelerating in this direction east, which means friction always opposes motion. So there is my friction. Now I also have a 50 Newton force of a pull. So I'm gonna put that here. Those are not balanced because it says we're moving two meters in 1.5 seconds. That means we are moving to the right and we started from rest. We have a change in velocity. So we know we have acceleration. And also the big hint is they've asked for acceleration. They've asked for what's the acceleration, the friction and the coefficient of friction. All right, so that's my force and my push or pull. All right, perfect. We have our free body diagram done. So now we can start the problem. Now, I told you in a video for strategies that if they ask for a friction force and they give you things like displacement and time, and then it started from rest, then you know that, hey, I can use a big three to find acceleration. Then I'm gonna take that acceleration and plug it into my Newton second law, the sum of the forces equal mass times acceleration to find that friction force. So I'm just gonna start with my big three. Now, why am I starting with this big three? Why did I pick this one? Because I know my time, I know my initial velocity, it's at rest, so that's zero. I start the problem, you can always start the problem at zero meters. I know my final, it went two meters, so I know everything in here except acceleration because I know my time as well. So I can find my acceleration in this one. There was no mention of final velocity here. So any of my final velocity UAMs, uh, they're not very helpful because I have two, uh, two variables that I don't know. So you can't solve for acceleration. So that's why I picked this one. Uh, just as a little FYI, I know that my initial velocity is zero. I know that my uh, time is 1.5 seconds. And I know that my displacement here, or XF in this case, I know my XF is two meters. And I know that my initial is zero because you can start these problems at zero meters. All right, so now I just plug and chug because I have my little table here. I'm gonna kind of put that like that so we don't get all confused. Final, now it's just plug and chug, is two. My acceleration is zero. This whole thing is zero plus one half my acceleration times 1.5 squared. If you were to solve for acceleration there, um, and actually, I'm even going to clean this up so it looks like this. Solve for acceleration. I'm not going to waste your time on um, basic math, but you get 1.778 meters per second squared. 
All right, perfect. I now have my acceleration. That's the first part done. Woohoo! All right, I'm going to box that. Now it says they want friction force. Oh, my friction force is right here, my free body diagram. It's that horizontal. So I'm going to sum up my forces horizontally. That's just how I'm going to go in the x direction times my acceleration in the x. And now I have two forces in that x direction. These are in the y, so I'm not going to sum them up in my horizontal direction. They're vertical. I have force of a push is to the east, because remember, force is a vector. It has direction. And I have my friction force. Now, again, if that plus minus makes you uncomfortable, just put minus. But for my students, I just wanted to remind them that we are adding all the forces. It's just force is a vector, and it has direction. So since that's to the left, west, it's negative. That's the only force I have. I have my mass of my turkey, and then I know my acceleration. Okay, now I'm going to plug and chug. All right, I have my, uh, first of all, I'm gonna actually solve for my friction force in variables because it gets easier now in this force unit. And it's really the right practice to solve for your variable and then plug in your numbers. So I'm gonna solve for my variable. I'm gonna add friction over. I'm gonna subtract mass times acceleration. And then that equals, let me write that a little bit better. Oh, maybe not use my finger, equals. Uh, my friction force. All right, now I can just pull in the numbers. Uh, force of a push was 50. My mass was 10. My acceleration is 1.778. And I get that friction force. And that friction force, if you do that math, comes out to be 32.2 newtons. So now I have my friction force. Also, it's still, it's, a, it's equally right to write it like that, your friction. So I just like the little small f there. All right, perfect. Now that's the second thing done. Woohoo! Now we can do, now they're asking for coefficient of friction. All right, well, we only have one equation that has coefficient of friction we talked about in the last video, and that is the fun formula that physics is fun. Uh, friction equals coefficient of friction times that normal force. All right, so uh, this was, we're gonna kind of draw a line here. I'm gonna draw a line here since the board's getting a little crazy. And uh, we're gonna do the friction equals mu times that coefficient of friction, which is mu, the Greek letter mu, times that normal force. All right, I know friction. I'm looking for mu, but oh no, I don't have normal yet. Oh no. All right, so we have two variables that we don't know. So we gotta figure out normal. So what do we do? Here we go, we draw another box. All right, normal, where is normal in my free body diagram? It's vertical, so guess what? We gotta sum our forces in the vertical. So we're gonna sum our forces in the y equal mass times acceleration in the y. Well, we mentioned that, that when this turkey was going across the table being pulled or pushed, um, it was not coming off the table vertically nor falling through the table. So there is no acceleration in the vertical direction. It's very similar to some of the rules in projectile motion, where what's happening in one direction is not what's happening in the other direction. So our acceleration in the y is equal to zero. So now I'm just gonna sum my forces. I have normal is up, my force due uh, to that surface pushing, that's up, and my force due to gravity uh, is down. So I have force, uh, normal, and actually I like to write an N. It would be equally right to write the capital F and the, the capital N as a subscript, but I like normal written like that. So however your teacher does it is the right way. And um, then we have minus that force due to gravity equals zero because any number times zero, your mass of 10 times zero is just zero. Now I'm gonna solve for that normal force. I'm gonna add to both sides that force due to gravity. So I get that, okay, well, we have a formula and you're like, okay, well, that's perfect. Normal is force due to gravity, but I don't have force due to gravity either. Oh, it's another box. All right, force due to gravity, we know this equation, it's mg, and that is mass times little g. That's 10 times 9.81, which the force due to gravity then is a 98.1. Okay, now we're now we're cooking. All right, now we got this. So we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna say, hey, normal is equal to force due to gravity, which we just found was 98.1 newtons. Perfect, now we can go put it in here for our friction force. I'm getting sloppy with my vector signs, sorry. I want mu, I know my normal force is 98.1. And actually, you know what, let me back up. I'm gonna actually solve for mu first. 
So I have my friction. I'm going to divide both sides by normal equals mu. Okay, all I did was uh, just divide both sides by normal. My friction force I found it was, and I'm going to come over here, woo, uh, is my friction force was 32.2. My normal force was 98.1, and that's going to equal my mu, and mu is 0.328. Now, normally we say a number without a unit is nothing. It, we don't know what that is. But in mu, yay, happy face, big, big, happy dance, happy face, that there is no unit on mu. Because look at this. Friction is, is a newton. It's a force, so it's measured in newtons. And normal is a force. It's measured in newtons, right? So we have newtons over newtons equals 1, and so mu has no coefficient. Perfect. That's it. I hope you hope that helped. Uh, it was several steps, but that's force problems for you. Happy physics -y.